With the recent introduction of the long-awaited skink in the British tech tree, a rather noticeable gap in the British anti-air line has finally been fixed, vastly improving British SPAA capabilities in Tier 4. However, prior to its announcement that it would be going to the British tech tree, there were many who argued for the skink to be added to the American tech tree. While some of these arguments were more to do with the chassis the skink was based on, most revolved around the effectiveness of American SPAA, between the M16 at 2.7 and the M163 at 8.0. So first of all, does this area of the US self-propelled anti-aircraft line really need additional vehicles? Well first of all, we need to look at what vehicles currently fill this gap. Now unlike the British tech tree, there isn't formally a gap as this is filled by the M19A1 and the M42 Duster. And to be clear, these aren't bad vehicles, with many people using them successfully, both are armed with hard-hitting twin 40mm automatic Bofors cannons. And if we look at the 1 second burst mass for these vehicles, we can see that the M19A1 is competitive at its tier, only beaten out by the new Skink, German Verbal Wind and the Chinese ZSD-63. However, by the time you reach the M42, this is no longer the case with the M42 being beaten out or equal to all other SPAA vehicles, with the exception of the ZSU-37, making this one of the worst SPAA to use at its tier. Another issue is that while in theory the 40mm guns are pretty powerful, their low rate of fire and difficulty in hitting targets makes them much harder for players to use. While testing SPAA vehicles in the testing ground, I found that the M19A1 was pretty good at hitting targets. However, when switching to the faster firing M16, despite its lower firepower, I was actually able to do just as well or sometimes even better than the M19. I also found more success in the M16 for long range shooting, despite the fact that the 40mm guns in theory should be much better suited to this task. And of course, once you get into actual matches against other players, who are often in smaller aircraft and performing evasive manoeuvres, the M19 and M42, while still useful, quickly become second fiddle to their easier to use faster firing counter. Counterparts. Lastly, because of the exposed firing platforms, the gun crews are easily killed by pretty much any vehicle and any weapon. So in my opinion, the answer is yes. The US SPAA line does need additional SPAA vehicles, not to replace the M19A1 or M42, but to complement them, and to offer players a choice between the hard-hitting 40mm guns or their faster firing alternatives. So, what are the options for the US? Unfortunately, while there are many options, they are restricted to the most part to prototypes. Now, of course, many people are against prototypes in any and all forms. However, there are many precedents for it in the US tech tree. For example, the T-25 medium tank, T-32 and T-34 heavy tanks, and the T-95 tank destroyer are all being used to plug gaps in the US tech tree. Therefore, using prototypes to plug gaps in the anti-air lineup shouldn't really be a huge issue. So, what SPAA vehicles are available? First of all, we have the T-77E1 Multiple Gun Motor Carriage, or MGMC, a development of the T-77. This is essentially an M19, but with an alternative armament of 650 caliber machine guns. A massive improvement in fire rate, while still retaining a decent amount of firepower. We also now have a mostly enclosed turret, meaning crew protection is much better than with the regular M19A1. While I haven't found armor stats for the turret, it would likely be around 38-25mm at best, which is about the same as the M24's regular turret. Gun elevation was minus 10 to 85 degrees, while in the design specifications traverse was supposed to be around 65 degrees a second, but whether this was achieved is not stated. Speed would likely be around the same as the M19 at around 35 miles per hour or 57 kilometers an hour, while the crew complement was 4, a driver, gunner, commander and bow machine gunner. However, as some of you might have noticed, the turret isn't quite fully enclosed, with the two turret crew members sticking their heads out. I'm unsure whether they would have to stick their heads outside of the turret in combat, but if so, this seriously compromises their and the vehicle safety. In the T-77E1, glass domes were installed in these positions, and while these might have been made of bulletproof glass, I'm unable to find any information to actually confirm this. Ultimately, despite these minor drawbacks, this is a vast improvement on the M16 and would make a good counterpart to the M19, offering a good amount of fast firing 50 cals over the M19's slow but hard hitting 40mm cannons. If added to War Thunder, this would likely go just after the M16, probably at a battle rating of 3.3, giving it a similar battle rating to the German Verbal Wind. 
The next vehicle is the T85E1, an attempt at building a SPAA on an M5A1 chassis. The chassis itself has been modified somewhat, specifically by lengthening the tank. The T85E1 is armed with four 20mm M3 cannons, which gives us quite a substantial upgrade over the 450 cows of the M16, as with a firing rate of 750 rounds per minute, we now have a devastating amount of firepower to deal with enemy aircraft while giving a far bigger punch than the 50 cows. Indeed, if my calculations are correct, the one second burst mass of this vehicle would be around 6.5 kilograms, which is almost double that of the M19 and M42, and even beats the verbal wind, which is only at 3.84 kilograms. As a bonus, by mounting the armament to an M5 light tank, we now have a highly mobile vehicle able to reposition itself quickly around the battlefield while still offering protection to the crew housed within the hull itself. I haven't been able to find exact crew numbers, but I suspect it would be around 3 to 4, with 1 to 2 in the hull and possibly 1 to 2 manning or loading the gun. Unfortunately, like with the M19 and the M42, this vehicle has an exposed firing compartment, leaving the crew very exposed to enemy air and ground attack. It could be argued this would be less of an issue than with the M19 or M42, as you now have a good chance of destroying enemy aircraft with your fast firing guns before they cause significant damage to your crew, but I suspect this wouldn't work out in practice. Overall, I think this could potentially come just before the M42, giving us a choice between this vehicle or the M19 or M42 when selecting lineups. I think a battle rating of 4.7 would be a good starting place for this vehicle, though a reduction or increase in BR would be possible depending on how well it performs in game. For the last vehicle of today we have the T100, prototype based on the T41, itself the prototype of the M41 Walker Bulldog. This vehicle is different from the previous ones in that it is fitted with a radar, though I've been unable to find any information on the type used or the specifications for it. Uniquely, the T100 is armed with four 60 caliber machine guns. Now, I haven't misspoken or misread the armament. This vehicle was armed with the T17E3, an American weapon reverse engineered from the MG151, which was seen as a possible replacement for the M2 Browning. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. This could be seen as a slight improvement over the M2 Browning with its increased calibre, 15.2mm versus 12.7mm, offering increased damage while still retaining a decent rate of fire, 600 rounds per minute versus 577 rounds for the M2. Indeed, the 460 calibers have a 1 second burst mass of around 3.6kg, double that of the M16's 1.53kg, and almost as good as the M19 and M42's 344 now unfortunately I haven't been able to find much information about the turret, but presumably it would be armoured against small arms fire at the very least. Gun elevation was minus 10 to 90 degrees, though I haven't been able to find a traverse rate for the turret. I also wasn't able to find any photos from the back, so I can't actually 100% ascertain if it was fully enclosed, but I would be 99% sure it would be. Speed would most likely be similar to that of the T41 at 45 miles per hour or 72 kilometers an hour, and the crew complement was free, a driver, gunner, and commander. Coupled with the radar, this vehicle could offer a decent SPAA vehicle for the American tech tree, but its battle rating would in large part be dictated by the radar specifications. Without knowing more about it, it will be hard to pin down a battle rating for it. I suspect it would be either just before or just after the M42, and while I suspect its battle rating couldn't really go any higher than 5.0 based solely on the armament, the battle rating would in large part depend on what radar was used. So as we can see, there are a few viable vehicles here. They're not all perfect, and most of them do have some downsides, but I think many people would see them as great improvements over the current M19 and M42. My favourite of the bunch so far is the T77E1, as it takes the basic M16 armament and offers us something similar but better while mated to a much better vehicle. That said, I think most of the vehicles on this list would be well liked by the community, and would be very successful in the SPAA role in War Thunder. Of course, this isn't an exhaustive list. I originally was going to talk about other vehicles such as the T-52 Sherman SPAA or the M-19 with the 75mm gun, but felt these wouldn't be a good fit for the game or I just wasn't able to find enough information on them. 
current list is what I consider to be the most beneficial vehicles and again what I was actually able to find a good amount of information on, though I may cover the other vehicles at some point in the future. I would be interested to hear what you think about this topic. Do you think the US Tech Tree does need additional SPAA vehicles? Which of these vehicles would you like to be added to War Thunder? And are there any others that you think should be added to War Thunder? I'd be interested to hear your opinions in the comments below. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, remember to like and subscribe if you did, I'm Toreno and I'll see you next time.